Now is Laffer Associates Chairman and former Reagan Economic Advisor, Art Laffer. Great to see you this morning, Art. Good to see you, Maria. That section with you and Joe Piscopo was the most entertaining I've seen in ages. <laughs> you two ought to go on the road. That was just wonderful. He is great. Yeah, I love he having him great. on. He is great. You are, too, by the way. You really played right with it. It was oh, great. Oh, thank you, Art. So let's talk about the economy here because it looks like things are going well, and yet you still have that off chance that we're going to see a recession over the near term or maybe a recession in 2020. We know earnings have slowed down quite a bit. What's your take on where we are right now, given the latest numbers are? I think Kevin Hassett's correct. I mean, we're going to have a bad first quarter, a much slower growth first quarter. That's for sure. But what you've got with Jay Powell is what he said last night on 60 Minutes is correct. Uh, you know, the rest of the world is slowing down, and it's slowing down considerably. Uh, but I don't think the U.S. is, and I think the U.S. has a long-term prospects of, of great growth with the tax cuts and the monetary reform that we've done, the regulatory reform. I mean, if the president does that wonderful proposal of making hospitals come clean, hospitals and doctors on what operations and what medical care actually costs in transactions, that would be unbelievably positive for the economy. So I'm looking forward to a very strong 19, 2019, uh, 2019. I think this recovery, whatever you want to call it, uh, boom, I've, I've been continues. Looking, I've been focused on the second quarter because of April 15th tax day. I'm wondering when people <laughs> pay their taxes and those high tax states like New York and New Jersey, are, are, if they're going to get sticker shock, if they're going to say, wow, yeah. I thought my taxes would be up because of the salt deduction elimination, but I didn't realize it was going to be up this much, and maybe then they pull in after April. What do you think? Oh, you've already got the Census Bureau numbers from 2017 to 2018. Now, that's in June, July. Those numbers come out. And you already see this acceleration. I mean, people are really understanding the impact of what happens when you get rid of that, uh, 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 when you get rid of the SALT deduction, or at least limit it. Yeah. And that'll have a huge impact. But you, the, but you, mean, say, but you said you're going to have a good 2019, so you, you're not really thinking that this is going to have that big of a, uh, it won't be that big of a deal. Oh, yeah, it will be a big deal, but it'll be a big deal negative for New York, but a great deal positive for Tennessee, where okay. I live. Okay. Uh, you know, the two balance out. <laughs> yeah. It'll change the constellation of U.S. states dramatically, but I don't think it will affect, I mean, I think it'll positively affect U.S. growth in total, uh, Our, but it will have some negative state effects. All right, I, I want to ask you about the, the growth rate again. We had uh, growth north of, a growth rate north of 4% in the second quarter, 3% in the third quarter, uh, uh, Two percent in the the second quarter. I'm sorry, in the fourth quarter, and now it looks like we're going to be around one percent in the first quarter of this year. It looks like the growth rate is slowing. You, you're saying we're going to have a really good year. What drives it? What's the driver of, of the acceleration that you're expecting after this deceleration we've seen for the last nine, twelve months? Yeah. If you look at fourth over fourth, which is what I did for 2018, and if you get that, you get you get a number in the neighborhood of 3.1 percent. But let's say it's three percent for the year. What you have is the tax cuts, the longer they're in place, the more they'll impact economic growth. The less tax evasion you'll get, the less tax sheltering you'll get, the more efficient tax codes, the less diversions. All of that stuff is going to be cumulative, I believe. What I think happened in the first quarter is the shutdown did have a big impact. It hurt the economy, and, and you'll get that recovery from that first quarter and the second quarter, I believe, and it, it, I think it looks really great for 2019. So you're looking at a recovery for 2019, but what happens if no China deal gets done? Well, China deal would be a huge plus. I would be very disappointed if no China deal got done. But a China deal will be very, very good, especially for markets. I mean, I think the stock market, uh, the number I just use is sort of a, a thumbnail approach is that it'll cause about a 4,000 pound, 4,000 on the Dow will be about the number you get from a good China deal. And that'll lead to faster economic growth as well. You can't underestimate the importance of China to U.S. trade and how much it impacts the U.S. economy. But it's what, really enormous. What happens if we say we get to May 1st and there's no deal? Well, I think that'll be negative for the, for the economy, for the country, uh, but I don't think it'll be a killer. I mean, as long as there's prospects for a deal later on.
Well, they're talking about the Mar-a-Lago meeting now going into April because, you know, they haven't set a date for the president to meet with Xi Jinping. Obviously, it feels like something broke down here. I don't, I, I don't know if China is balking at the idea that it needs to stop stealing IP well, or what. Well, apparently there was reporting in the Wall Street Journal that they were, that Xi Jinping was thrown off by President Trump walking away from the North Korean summit, and he did not want to go into any meeting at Mar-a-Lago with President Trump without a, a deal that was ironclad. Which is what I reported Trump yesterday right. on Sunday. And when they did get thrown off because of the North Korea uh, summit breakdown, you have to wonder if the president would have the same kind of attitude toward Xi Jinping. If they don't, you know, if, if they say, look, we have this meeting set, I'm going to come to Mar-a-Lago, I'm going to do it, and then the president decides, well, I'll cancel it, <laughs> and uh, then Xi Jinping gets embarrassed. So there is some truth to that. I think there's a lot of truth to that. In fact, I think he's very smart not to come to Mar-a-Lago without having a good deal in hand. Larry Kudlow was on the show this weekend and said, you know, there's no deal that we'll do that's not a good deal. And that's the correct way to be. I mean, we've waited a long time for this deal with China. It's been a long, long slog. Yeah. And, you know, why rush it and not get the right deal? If we're six months later, who cares? In the long run, all of that doesn't matter. What we really need to do is have free trade with China and free trade to China is enormous for the U.S. I mean, with, with, without China, yeah. there is no Walmart. And right, we want to look at the no consumer because we're waiting on retail sales. We're going to get retail sales in about 30 seconds. And the okay. estimate right now is for retail sales for the month of January to be unchanged. But those numbers are, are coming out literally imminently. Would you say it's the consumer or the business sector really driving growth here? Because that CapEx number that we got last week was pretty impressive, actually. I think it's really a supply-side driven model. I mean, we have business tax rate reductions, personal income tax rate reductions, all of which increase the incentives for people to work and produce and increase output. That's why you're seeing participation rates rise. That's why you're seeing the growth in the economy continuing is because it's it pays off to work. And that's really I okay. want to get your reaction to the retail sales number okay. because it's imminently coming out here. Would you say that the consumer is strong right now or what up two tenths of a percent is the number. This is actually better than expected, Art. We were expecting an unchanged number, and retail sales for the month of January are up two tenths of a percent. Your reaction? I think that's great. I mean, I think it's right in line with what I expect. I expect a long-term period of economic growth in the U.S. And all of these people who say it's a sugar high from the tax cuts and all that are just plain wrong. Those tax cuts aren't going back up again. We're going to have those tax rates in place for a long time, and they will increase economic growth for a long time. Retail sales uh, better than expected, John Helsenrath. Two tenths uh, of a percent. We, we also have to see if there's any kind of revisions on the December numbers, but a January number of two tenths is that, that's that's good news that consumers. It kept nice. it going in in the in in January when we had a government shutdown. A lot of people thought that actually could that could even push the numbers down. Or, or I, I want to so. ask you while we're waiting for these December numbers to show up about the outlook for government spending. So there's a budget out today from the White yeah. House calling for five percent discretionary uh, budget cuts. It looks like just the app the opposite is going to happen in Washington. It looks like you know there, there are budget caps that go back uh, in place on October 1st if there isn't a new budget deal. It looks like there's going to be a new spending deal and there's going to be more spending and not uh, cuts in uh, not cuts in spending as the White House. House oh is proposing. What are you? What you're, is, you're is that ruining okay? my day. <laughs> you're ruining my day. I mean, uh, the president obviously would love to see spending cuts. That's the one area of economics where there has been no progress. Spending restraint is key to economic prosperity in the long but run. But he's ruled and out. He's no ruled spend. out in cuts in entitlement spending. Well, he's a so 5% cut across the board, I thought, in non-defense spending is what I thought he'd ask for right. uh, in this. And, that you know, Congress will do what they'll do. But I think he's really laying this up for a political issue in 2020 because ultimately without spending cuts, you're not going to get the long-term prosperity what we really need. What the happened in, in December, Art? The revised retail sales number is not good. Uh, December was initially down 1.2 percent, and we've got a revision here for the month of December, which is now showing a decline of 1.6 percent. Was this an outlier, or did something—I mean, was this just the market volatility that we saw at the end of last year? 
Well, we did see a lot of market volatility, which would push retail sales down. I mean, that's really true. But I think it's an outlier. I mean, I, I just can't see that that's the correct number long term. I mean, if it is there, maybe it's the timing of the month or whatever. The seasonals are off. But that's not a normal number. All right. We will leave it there. Art, it's great to see you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Maria. Art Laff for joining us there. we got the breaking news on retail sales. Markets are still lower. Not a major reaction. We're expecting a decline of almost 200 points on the Dow, largely due to Boeing. Stay with us.